All right, so last time we talked about the differences between ionic and covalent bonds, and now we're going to talk about how covalent bonds can exhibit characteristics of ionic bonds, and that's due to the differences in electronegativity between our activities between the two atoms that are bonding. So that really determines what kind of bond you're going to have. Okay, so remember electronegativity is the attraction that an atom has to uh, attract the electrons to itself. So if it is able to pull the electrons more towards itself, it's more electronegative when it's bonding. So the higher electronegative atom, because the electrons are more attracted to it, it's going to have a partial negative end, which you can see with this sign right here. And then the less electronegative atom is going to have a positive charge because the electrons are being pulled away from it so it's going to exhibit more of a positive charge and that's the symbol for that okay so that just means a partial positive and a partial negative now if this was a completely ionic bond if it was completely ionic it would have a positive and a negative charge not partial anything Okay, so remember electronegativity increases going up and to the right. So fluorine is the most electronegative atom. And all atoms are assigned a value, a number value of their electronegativity. Now, you're not going to have to memorize this or anything, but you do need to uh, have that sheet out that I gave you with all the electronegativities on it. Okay, so let's look at a nonpolar covalent bond. So this means that they are sharing the electrons. And if it's nonpolar, that means that the electrons are being shared equally. Okay, this usually happens between identical atoms. So if I have an H and H uh, sharing electrons or chlorine and chlorine sharing electrons, it'll be nonpolar. So the difference in the electronegativity should be between 0 and 0.5. So let me show you an example of that. So when you're looking at this table right here, if I had uh, sulfur and chlorine being bonded, sulfur has an electronegativity of 2.5, chlorine has an electronegativity of 3. So if I take the difference 3 minus 2.5, that would give me 0.5. So the difference in the electronegativity for nonpolar covalent bonds would be between 0 and 0.5. If that difference is somewhere in between those two numbers, or at that number, um, we say it's nonpolar. Okay, so a polar covalent bond is where the electrons are not shared equally. And that's because you have one atom that is much more electronegative than the other atom. And that will result in the partial charges, which is also called a dipole. Um, you might want to write that down somewhere, that a dipole is uh, where you have partial charges between two atoms. So the difference in the electronegativity here would be between, between 0.5 and 2.1. So if you subtract the two electronegativity values and get between these numbers, you're going to say it's polar. Okay, so nonpolar is where they're sharing the electrons, but they're sharing them equally. Nonpolar is when they're sharing the electrons, but unequally, because one atom it has uh, attracted more electrons towards it. And ionic is when you're not sharing at all, you've just transferred. Okay, so with that sheet of electronegativity values, go ahead and pull that out, and let's do some examples. Okay, so let's look at chlorine's electronegativity value. I'm just going to go back a slide. Okay, so chlorine right here is 3.0. Okay. Okay, so chlorine has a value of 3.0. So if I have two chlorine atoms here, that's going to be 3.0 minus 
3.0, which is 0. So this should be nonpolar. Okay, so we know chlorine right here is 3.0. Let's just go ahead and go back and look at that value for hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is 2.1 right here. Okay, so 2.1 and 3.0. So let's just take 3.0 minus 2.1. We're going to get 0.9. So this is higher than 0.5, so we're going to say this is polar, covalent. And then NaCl, should be able to tell just because it's metal and a non-metal, but let's go ahead and just show you the electron uh, negativity values. Okay, so sodium is right there, 0.9, and then chlorine is 3.0. Okay, so chlorine was 3.0 minus 0.9. That should give you 2.1. And if it's higher than 2.1 or 2.1 or higher, it's going to be ionic.